The Lucimar School District has demographics that are fairly representative of the state of California as, as a whole. We're about 50% for introduced lunch. We have in the neighborhood of about uh, 20 to 25% English learners. And our makeup is in many ways ethnically and in terms of economics, very, very, uh, we're, very we're a very typical district in the state of California. The Royal Granny High School has about 2,180 students, uh, 40 to 45% Hispanic. 55% white, and then around 5% other African American, Asian. It's basically 40% Title I or free and reduced lunch. We generally have 92 to 95% graduation rate. The instructional leadership team is a group that is made up of about 11 teachers right now. Our site administration is also involved, and the teachers are a broad representation of different subject areas here at school, as well as different levels of expertise. And together, we create, develop, and deliver all of the professional development activities for Royal Grande High School. We realize that we have a staff that ranges from very young to very experienced and rather than go out and find people to teach things with regards to curriculum we realized we had that here on our campus so really the ILT was created one to come up with curricular issues and things that we could do as a staff and then to take our staff and utilize the experience and the professionalism that we had and teach each other. The intent of the ILT is to help us become better as teachers and as learners. That can happen in a lot of lot of ways and it's been interesting to be honest with you about how we have gone about that this year. Some things we try don't work, some things we try work and I think that's true for any teacher in a classroom also is you you've got to be willing to try something new. You can't just rely on what's come before so uh, in my own situation I'm every night when I go home, I, I go, okay, I did this last year. What can I do differently this year to connect with the students I have this year? I feel like I've had examples shown to me of great teaching strategies, and then I have the confidence to go to my classroom and try them. And if it doesn't work, I have people who I can go to and, and talk about, okay, I tried this, it didn't work, does anyone have any suggestions? And that feels good. So tell me a little bit about what you're writing for this particular artwork. Oh, the different colors that are being used. Okay, and then what, what sort of feeling do you get when you look at this? I feel like warm and but cold at the same time. Warm and cold. Because of the blue. Okay, and then let's look at the name. So what's the name of this artwork? Bad day. Bad day. <laughs> Which piece do you think really represents that bad day? Uh, the centerpiece. The centerpiece. And, and the lightning. Yeah, definitely the lightning. And then what do these sort of texture shapes kind of look like? They look like raindrops. They do, exactly. Wonderful. The uh, instructional leadership team has impacted my decision making in the classroom. It has helped me incorporate uh, technology in the classroom. It has also helped me introduce my ideas and connect with the ideas of my colleagues. It's a great opportunity to also talk about uh, Common Core. The neat element of the instructional leadership team is it's allowed us to build a lot of internal capacity. It's so often with professional development, it gets lost somewhere between the conference and the drive home. It never finds its way to a classroom. What we're doing here, it's a lot of it's homespun. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's driven internally from our staff's desires and the needs of our own students that it becomes personal. And I think it's more highly implemented here. The bottom line is the, the job of running a school and, 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 and making a school click the way that it needs to click is a massive job. We can't move the academic program forward through the use of administrative leadership only. I think what we have to do is, is kind of get an understanding of the culture of the high school. Uh, we have great leadership. We have uh, principal, assistant principals who care about kids, who know kids. I mean, 2,200 students and you'll see them out here on the yard and they'll be talking to the kids, calling them by their first name. The kids know the leadership cares. And then we get great guidance and we get a vision from our administration that allows us to focus as teachers on what we need to do to have success in the classroom and to help kids. And uh, finally, we have a great community, a community that cares. 
And so um, what we try and accomplish here, we've gotten great support out in the community to help us build the vision that we think is necessary for these kids to, to be able to go on and have a successful life, really, and, and that's the whole point. Honestly, um, I'd have to say that Arroyo Grande is successful because of the relationships that um, the teachers um, have with the students and vice versa. I think um, there's just um, an effort put in right there. Um, they're striving um, for our success and we're striving to, to gain our knowledge that they're, that they're giving um, to us. And um, the administration, everyone, everyone here at AG, the faculty, everyone just has a common goal and that is to help us move on to the next level, which is college or our trade schools or whatever that may be. And um, I, I really love and appreciate that about all of our faculty here at AG. I've loved all four years here, but definitely sort of there's a lot of choice um, and people are willing to work with you, the administration, the teachers, everyone is really willing to sort of help you figure out what that is, work with your own passion, work with whatever class that you want to have. This is one of the advanced fabrication classes that students have the opportunity to do community service build projects as well as personal projects that they have the opportunity to sell at fairs and um, at local swap meets, stuff like that. Royal Grande High School is an incredible place to be. We have something for everyone here, and I think that one of the things that we are known for, first off, is the quality of our academics. I think being an AP teacher, uh, I've been here almost 30 years now, and uh, uh, I can remember when I first came here that uh, we barely had an AP program at all. I think my first year we had seven students in my AP calculus classes. I had one class. So we've been able to grow that, and it's really due to our whole department pulling together, and I think that's a bit another big aspect. And we're up to uh, over 100 students now taking the AP Calculus exam. But I would not want to just rest there. It's a big transition for kids when they go from the middle school to the high school, and especially a high school the size of ours. It can be a scary proposition, especially if you have not had success in the middle school. Uh, so we try and give them as much support as we can academically that first year with a class that is uh, meant to help them in their core classes, math, English, and uh, science. We have an incredible agriculture program, an incredible visual and performing arts program. Our career technical education classes are just exploding right now. There's so many pathways to success for students here. And even though we have a big school, about 2,300 students here right now, people really try to take the time to get to know students individually and help them succeed in whatever way is, is the best for them. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what you're pursuing in the uh, art of cooking. Well, I'm planning on being a chef, obviously. I'm going out to Catalina after this year and apprenticing out there with a chef. And yeah, I mean, I'm just working really hard to do it. And this class has helped me so much. Like, I can't even express how much it's helped me. I think my favorite thing that's happened here is that last year in the film program, I'm really interested in filmmaking and things. I actually, uh, thanks to the film teacher got my short film that I made into one of the local theaters here to show for a few times and that was something that was really surreal for me that I actually got something that I made up on a big screen for people to see. My math teacher has been incredibly helpful throughout and you know I finished math last year in my high school and you know I'm taking an online course so my teacher he would administer the proctor tests outside of his class time. In winter break, I came in, and he came in on a Monday when school was out, and he would spend three hours with me proctoring an exam. That's how much attention that they pay me. And, you know, my English teacher, I do a project with kids in Bangladesh, and, you know, when I go out to present to the community, my teacher would take time out of her schedule teaching and go to see me. And those moments are special. And I think that makes us care about school. And once we care, we do well. Arroyo Grande has definitely given me the opportunity to um, go into college with whatever, with whatever I choose. Um, they have given me the skills, social skills, um, educational skills, everything that I will need, all my resources um, to succeed after high school.